Tony. Really? Is that what you think? That's what President Obama calls it. Tonight, a special one-hour investigation into the IRS scandal. Scandal at the IRS. Are you or are you not going to provide this committee all of Lois Lerner's email? Yes, we will do that. Not true. The commissioner now saying Lerner's hard drive crashed. When did he know? And why didn't he tell Congress when it happened? The lead congressional investigator going on the record and he just did it again. Phony scandals. Phony scandal? Really? Congresswoman Michelle Bachman is outraged and ready to respond. Plus, they're the ones who are targeted and they are ready to fire back. Three Tea Party leaders standing by for a one hour investigation into the IRS scandal. And next week, the focus turns to the House Ways and Means Committee investigation. Committee member, Representative Aaron Schock joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Thanks for having me on. And tonight, uh, we have uh, a letter that has just gone out to the chairman of the Ways and Means from the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue um, Service. It says they're going to get you uh, emails by the end of next week. Well, great. Uh, we heard that last month uh, in May, Commissioner Koskin told the Ways and Means Committee that we would have all of the emails from Lois Lerner without uh, any hesitation, without any delay. And then we found out earlier this month that in fact, two years worth of the emails uh, that we were requesting were in fact lost. So I'm not sure uh, when to believe Commissioner Koskin uh, or which letters uh, that he sends to us to take seriously. Well, I tell you, the oldest trick in the books in this Washington is that, first of all, this letter went to Ways and Means on Friday afternoon, which is what they always do to sort of bury it so the media doesn't, you know, so the media can't do much with it. But uh, the second thing that I find most stunning about it is it says the end of next week. I mean, next week is the 4th of July when everyone, many people in the media are gone. So they're going to do a document dump supposedly then. I mean, this is the oldest trick in the books. You know, frankly, I become more suspicious <clears throat> by conduct than by content. You're right. You know, it's never the crime, it's the cover-up. And I don't know exactly what all Lois Lerner did, but uh, I know on day one when she chose to uh, plead the fifth and refused to cooperate, cooperate and testify, that immediately uh, uh, raised my ears and my eyebrows and said, wait a minute, there's maybe more to this story. And it's every week, every month that this goes on, we uncover more and more information uh, and, and, and the furnace gets hotter. And uh, nobody believes the latest revelation on these lost emails. Nobody believes that uh, Chairman Dave Camp in June of 2011 sent a letter uh, to the IRS asking them to investigate the targeting of these conservative groups and 10 days later by happens chance, 10 days later uh, Lois Lerner's hard drive crashes and they determined that all of the emails are lost for two years and completely unrecoverable. And then we find out that it just so happens during that same period of time, that same two year window, uh, that six of the 80 people that were investigating, their hard drives too crashed. And just like Laurel Slurner's, their hard drives too were unrecoverable. Uh, look, there's not a computer at Fox News, there's not a computer uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, where we work, whose hard drive crashes, whose all of their emails are completely unrecoverable. And it certainly statistically did not happen uh, to six of the people in question all during the same period of time, all on separate computers. Uh, it's what? unbelievable. and. Uh, uh, we need to get to the bottom of it, which is why the Department of Justice needs to appoint a special prosecutor. They need to get the FBI forensics uh, IT specialists involved in this and get to the bottom of it. All right, well, 76% of people surveyed by Fox News think that there's something funny about the emails, too, that they were deliberately destroyed. But I'm not so good. That Dave Camp letter that you spoke to, I, I read it a little differently than everybody else. I know everybody else is suspicious and that that was a catalyst uh, for destruction of emails. Uh, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of funny business going on here, but I have a little different. Uh, I'm not convinced yet that that was the catalyst. Um, but aside from that, what's your impression of Commissioner Koskinen? What do you think about him? Well, I think he had um, a little too much hubris and a little too much um, uh, uh, cockiness at our hearing, quite frankly. Um, the fact that he sat there with his smirk and refused to apologize uh, and said that nobody did anything wrong, uh, that he was a turnaround specialist, that anybody who questions uh, uh, his commitment is, um, uh, is out of line. Here's, here are the facts. He may be a turnaround specialist. He may think that he's there to, to make sure that emails never get lost again. He's focused 
focused on putting in new procedures and practices. What he's not doing is investigating what happened. He's less interested in what happened. He's all about, you know, hey, let's make sure the organization uh, doesn't do this again. That's fine. But, but for the rule of law, for the accountability within the IRS, uh, and for the, the sake of the taxpayers whose rights were violated, we need to get to the bottom of, of why, these tar why this targeting was going on, uh, and specifically now, Chris? why all these emails got lost, and who made the play call to destroy federal property and send these hard drives to a recycler. All right. Well, I have, I'm not. I have to take a look at this turnaround uh, expert stuff because uh, I, you know, I'd like to look to see how successful this is what it he was. Claimed. Number one, what? This, yeah, this this is what he claimed. He also claimed well, to be. No, no, um, I understand. Uh, I understand that he cl he claims it, but I want to see it. But the second thing is, and I know you're busy, but uh, too bad you can't stick around for my off the record tonight because I think you'd find it uh, very interesting what I have to say about the commissioner. But anyway, um, I'll show it to you next time we see each other. I have a Thank sneaky suspicion us. that we might. I have a sneaky suspicion we might agree. I have a sneaking suspicion as well. Anyway, thank you, sir. <laughs> Good to be with you, Greta. And it's not just the House Ways and Means Committee. Other congressional Republicans are demanding answers. Fox News Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel is here to break it down for us. Mike. Well, Greta, there are a range of investigations going on across Capitol Hill and throughout our federal government looking into the IRS scandal. One is in the House Ways and Means Committee, which writes tax laws, and today, Asked the White House and Treasury how they learned of former official Lois Lerner's hard drive crash, who told them, and more. Ways and Means held a tough hearing grilling Commissioner John Koskinen one week ago. Then there's the House Oversight Committee chaired by Daryl Issa, which held a bruising hearing on Monday night of this week. Oversight is the committee that sent Koskinen a letter last Saturday asking 15 detailed questions about the missing IRS emails. In the Senate, the investigation is being handled in a bipartisan way by the Finance Committee. Democrat Chairman Ron Wyden and top Republican Orrin Hatch have been working very closely and in a low-key fashion trying to get to the bottom of the IRS targeting of conservative groups. This week, Hatch sent Wyden a letter saying he wants to have a hearing on the missing emails. But Wyden and many other Democrats are saying they should allow the Treasury Inspector General to conduct his independent review to get the hard facts. The Inspector General is doing an expedited report on the missing emails at the IRS and we're told he's hoping to issue that in the coming weeks. There's also technically an open investigation that the Justice Department as well, although many are skeptical that will produce results after President Obama has called this a phony scandal and told Bill O'Reilly there isn't a smidgen of corruption at the IRS. Greta. Mike, thank you. And ever since May 10th, 2013, the day the news of the IRS targeting first broke, the scandal has exploded. So now let's take a look at how it all started and where the investigation has led. This is a Fox News alert. President Obama now admitting the IRS targeted conservative groups. A scandal shocking Americans from coast to coast. Were you targeted? Uh, absolutely we were targeted and it feels kind of creepy to be on somebody's enemy list. Tea Party and conservative groups, even a U.S. Senator, targeted by their own government. I am angry about it. In July 2010, the IRS Determinations Unit charged with giving tax-exempt status to organizations took action, telling workers to scrutinize all groups if they have political sounding names like we the people no more tyranny. then fast forward one year congress firing off new letters with a simple demand is the irs targeting the tea party absolutely no targeting this is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4 status the back and forth continues congressional republicans demanding answers administration officials denying targeting then on may 10th 2013 a bomb Shell. IRS official Lois Lerner says in some 75 applications, IRS officials stepped over the line. An official says workers wrongly singled out organizations which used words Tea Party or Patriot in their filings. And on May 15, 2013, the president goes public. I will not tolerate this kind of behavior in any agency, but especially in the IRS. Congress, now where the targeting did occur, calls on Lois Lerner to testify. I have not done anything wrong. On May 23rd, 2013, Lois Lerner refuses calls for her resignation and is placed on administrative leave. 
On June 7th, the Associated Press reports that IRS agents in the Cincinnati office believed their work had been closely monitored by higher-ups in Washington. On June 19th, the Department of Justice launches its own investigation, assigning more than a dozen FBI agents to the case and putting Barbara Bosterman, a financial backer of President Obama, in charge of the investigation. We want you to investigate the circumstances surrounding the selection of, of Barbara Bosterman to head this investigation. And in January 2014, a DOJ official leaking to the Wall Street Journal even before the investigation ends that there will not be criminal charges. On June 24, 2013, the IRS announces that some liberal groups were put on be on the lookout list. But the Inspector General saying there is no evidence the IRS ever actually scrutinized those groups. On August 2, 2013, Oversight Committee Chairman Darrell Issa subpoenas the Treasury Department and the IRS for all communications sent or received by Lois Lerner. February 2014, the IRS learns that many of Lerner's emails are missing, lost due to a computer hard drive crash, but doesn't tell Congress. In March 2014, Lerner returns to Congress to testify, again pleading the fifth throughout the hearing. I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. The next day, the IRS promises it will release all of Lerner's emails, even though they were aware of the hard drive crash months earlier. And then, on June 13th, the IRS finally informs the House of Representatives that they have lost Lois Lerner's emails from January 2009 to April 2011. And you can't keep six months' worth of employee emails? And so, 17 congressional hearings, two House investigations, one Senate investigation, one Justice Department investigation, and four IRS commissioners later, the search for answers continues. Well, so are Americans buying the IRS claim that crucial emails simply vanished? Well, let's take a look at the Fox News poll this week. 76% of those surveyed believe the missing emails were destroyed deliberately. 76%. Joining us, our political panel, Washington Examiner Susan Fariccio, The Washington Post West Lowry, and Fortune Magazine Senior Editor Nina Easton. Nina, 76%. That doesn't, even, doesn't even seem close. Well, of course. They think that they were destroyed. Seventy-six percent. I mean, when you look at the when you look deliberately, at the, deliberately. When you look at just kind of the the surface facts, they don't even have to dive deep on this. But um, you have Lois Lerner, the central figure, uh, taking the fifth. Then you have the fact that um, House uh, Committee Chairman Dave Camp request, wrote a letter requesting more information from Lois Lerner. Uh, ten days later, those emails disappear, uh, and we don't know where they are. Uh, we have the U.S. Archivist saying that the IRS broke its own rules in not retaining that kind of information. And by the way, in the private sector, Sarbanes-Oxley, a law passed by Congress, requires public companies to keep these kinds of emails for at least five years. These, these weren't remotely that old. I guess, Wes, you have to think that the government or people in the government are more competent than I do. I mean, it's like, you know, to believe that they deliberately destroyed it. Um, I guess that I don't see the government ever working that efficiently or competently. Well, well, of course, I think, I was actually surprised that so many people believe they were deliberately destroyed because for me, it's not a very hard sell to believe that, no, yeah, maybe the government did accidentally destroy these crucial documents. Um, it, it was very, it's very surprising um, that that many people believe it was done deliberately, but I do think that speaks to how this issue is beginning to resonate. I mean, I think when the IRS scandal first broke, it was one of a number of things that were kind of snowballing at the same time. I think right now, as kind of Benghazi has taken the uh, back seat for a little while, as the select committee gets going, um, as some of the other scandals have kind of moved off, this has become a real focus now in these last few months and will continue to be for the next few months. So I think there's so much to be suspicious here, so much, it's just, you know, in terms of like, you know, whether it's the, the Grassley, uh, the attack, we're going to talk about that later, the, uh, where Lois Lerner went after Grassley, but um, here's, are, are you 76? Six percent. Does that just surprise you? Well, also, if you look at those poll numbers, to add to what Wes is saying, it's bipartisan doubt in the IRS. It's Democrats. If you look at the breakdown, Democrats and Republicans alike say that they don't believe the IRS. So it's not just a, a partisan issue here where we just have doubt in a, in a Democratic administration. And then you look at the number of people who are unsure. It's a very small number, which again shows so many people are paying attention to this issue. So many people are following this. It's, it's a great public issue of interest. And despite what the administration is saying, that this is just a scandal that's being dreamed up by Washington, I think the public really wants to know what happened here. And they, they don't believe it. If you look at the facts, to me, it's just a big puzzle. And you look at all the pieces 
Republicans in all the hearings we've had, and you've listened to the excuses that have been put forward by the IRS, a lot of it is just sounds so ludicrous. The excuses about a crashed hard drive 10 days after a request was made for information, when we know those e emails went somewhere. Why can't we get the emails on the other end? Well, you, Everybody's asking those questions. You know, Nina, I'm surprised the media isn't more interested than I mean, even that sort of that phony thing that Lois Lerner did at the very beginning where she planted that question at the a ABA to sort of the beat the, the uh, uh, Treasury IG report. I mean, that was so bizarre. That was so yeah. deliberate. I mean, if that did, but yet the media doesn't seem all whooped up about this. Well, I think you can bet, Greta, if this was a Republican White House and it was going targeting liberal groups, that this would be on the front page of every newspaper and uh, this would be beating the drums. And the effect of the, uh, a lot of the media not taking this as seriously is that it puts Republicans in the position of being the questioners, right? And so it, it kind of furthers the idea that it's a partisan issue as opposed to a real issue. That's the excuse the New York Times gave. There's an interesting discussion about why they hadn't put this on the front page or given it more attention. And the argument the editors made was, this is a big partisan issue, and so we're, we're treading carefully. Well, what about the solid facts in, involving the issue? Why aren't those making it to the front page? Sure, there's a lot of partisan back and forth here, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the IRS lost two years' worth of emails, and there's real evidence that they were targeting people politically, which West, is incredible. West, is the media going light on this? I think that I think we'll see a pickup of this in the next few weeks, and I think in the next few months as well. What In the defense of some of these organizations and, and some of these media companies, inclu including my own, I, mean, I think we've certainly, we've covered a lot of the IRS scandal. Um, I mean, to, to make the blanket argument that it's not being covered, I mean, the specific argument was made about the New York Times, why did they do this Chris Christie story on the front page? Page versus or the Scott the, Walker story. Or the Scott Walker story, mm -hmm. which, which got a lot of attention right. last week. And, and I which think everybody's now backed down on. Yeah. Everyone stepped away from. And so I think those are fair questions, and I'm always, always happy to kind of debate that and have our own feet held to the fire. But like I said, I do think that there has been some coverage of this, and I can only imagine it's going to continue as the IRS continues to and not be able to answer the question. Panel, and and panel, missing, and missing emails ramps it up. It, indeed, yeah. it, I think the Grassley thing really uh, ramps up when you see her email, but uh, we're going to talk about that later. Anyway, panel, thank you. Thank you. Of course. And it's the question we know you're all asking. Why can't the computer experts just track down those vanished emails? Is there a way? Well, we're going to go straight to the experts for an answer next. Plus, the group in the IRS direct line of fire, the Tea Party. Do they think the investigation has gotten anywhere in the last year? You're going to hear from our panel of Tea Party leaders as this special edition of On the Record continues.